Hey guys and welcome to CPL Fever, it's your host Jack and Angie Murray here and today on another episode of Soccer Stories Get Into The Journey, I'm ecstatic because we are interviewing someone who I was excited about before he even made his CPL debut. He play, has played for Northern Ireland, he has played in New Zealand, in England and now in Canada, Pacific FC midfielder Ollie Bassett. So how are you? I'm good, very good, thank you. Thank you for having me guys. Yeah, we're so excited to talk to you. And like um, I said, we think that you have made you have been like a, such an important part uh, in Pacific, and we've really enjoyed watching you play in the center of the park for Pacific. Thank you. It's been a good. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a good start. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And our my, our first question for you is: How did you fall in love with the beautiful game? Um. I think for me it was just I started playing I think when I was maybe three or four, um, just down the local park like uh, with my with my dad when I was younger, um, and then yeah I just from there joined my my local team um, just playing like with my friends and stuff and then you know I just got the enjoyment um, you know from from playing with with my mates and stuff like that you know I wasn't really taking it too seriously at the time um, and then yeah it was just from from there I think I've ever, I've just you know carried on playing. Um, for, for you know the last 14, 15, 16 years, however long it's been. When did you start taking it seriously? Like when did when did you uh, know that you were like yeah like I'm I'm a pretty good player? I'd say even bef even after I was signed um, into the Villa Academy, it was still I was still just you know I was still only seven eight, so you know I still wanted to play with my friends and stuff like that. But you know they they made a rule they made rules. Um, you know, when you sign for an academy, you can't go and play, um, you know, for your local team anymore. So obviously, I had to cut cut ties with them. Um, but yeah, I would say around around that time, really, uh, when I was starting to train with you know better players and you know getting coached by by good coaches, um, I think that's when that's when I started taking it a little bit more, a bit more seriously, rather than just having a kick around with my mates on the weekend. So. Yeah, so the after the academy sounds pretty cool. Did you, like, could you expand about that and how like the experience was was like? Because you came in really young, and I'm sure the Aston Villa academy had a lot of stuff to teach, but it was also a pretty cool place. Yeah, so I think I um, they they scouted me from like a, a local tournament. Um, I can actually remember remember it pretty well actually. Um, <laughs> the scout was you know kind of on the corner um, of, of the pitch just watching the game. Um, and after the game, he came over and spoke to to my dad, and then spoke to me, and then I think I went in for maybe like a, a training for a week when I was seven. Um, but you can't sign until you're eight um, due to some some rules within the academy. Um, so I trained with them until until I was eight, and then as soon as I turned eight years old, um, obviously signed with them, and then yeah, I stayed with them until I was uh, sixteen. So I was there for maybe eight eight nine years. Um, but yeah, obviously it's a step up from playing you know local football with your friends. Um, you know the the facilities they have. They pretty much put everything in place for for you to succeed. So you know it's down to the player then. You know if whether they want it enough or not. Um, and yeah, obviously I was getting coached by by some of the best coaches in in England, and I think that's where I learned the majority of my of my skills. You know, growing up and stuff like that. So yeah, it was it was definitely a good um, positive experience for me. How many days a week were you playing for the for the academy? Um, so until you go full time, it was just. It was twice a week, so uh -huh. I, I was obviously I was still in school at the time. Um, so from from eight until around thirteen, fourteen, it was just um, Tuesday, Thursday trainings, and then a game on the weekend. Um, and then when I turned fourteen, fifteen, they started taking me out of school for a day or a day and a half, and it turned into uh -huh. you know two and a half, three days a week with with a game on the weekend. Um, but at the time, my, my brother was in the academy as well. Um, so my mum and dad were doing the same trip maybe four or five times a week because he trained on different nights to me. So oh, Of course, of they, course. Yeah, so they were pretty much there every day, um, whereas only, I was only there maybe two, three days a week. But yeah, that, that, was, that was funny as well. Yeah, it must have been cool having your brother in the academy. And like, uh, did he, was he older than you? So did like he get into the academy first or was it you? No, so he's he's younger than me. Um, okay. So he's eighteen now. But in the academy, they 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 run it by age group. So normally, what will happen is the 
the even age groups, so say under 10s, under 12s, under 14s, mm -hmm. under 16s, they'll train all on the same night. And then the odd age groups will train on different nights. So it'll be Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and I used to train Tuesday, Thursday, and he used to train Monday, Wednesday. So, yeah, my parents are running up and down the motorway, you know, four times a week. Um, and, then, and then a game on the weekend. Um, so I think we used to play... We would never play at home at the same time and we would never play away at the same time. So it would always be even my mum or dad would come and watch me and then whoever was playing away, the other one would go and watch my brother. So, yeah, that's how it used to work. There was a lot, there was a lot of travelling. Yeah, sounds like my life right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, at the academy, was there something that, that kind of surprised you that they, that they would focus on? Like, like when you went into the academy, did they say, okay, now we're doing drills just with your, with your weak foot or things like that? Um, I think, well, at, at the younger age, it was just um, everything was like with the ball and stuff like that. So they would never really like, you know, put players on the pitch and just make them run and stuff like that. It was always, um, if they were doing any type of fitness and stuff, it would all be like um, ball, ball specific. So they would always try and incorporate the ball. Um, but I think at the younger age groups, like, you know, when you're 7, 8, all, all they try and do is, you know, get you as many touches on the ball as they can. Um, and then when you start to get older, that's when they start to work on like the tactical and the, the physical side of the game and stuff like that. But when you're younger, it's all about um, just, you know, getting touches on the ball and getting and getting comfortable on the ball. Yeah. OK, that makes sense. Like get it like when you're young to try and get so really comfortable on the ball so you can like be super comfortable with it no matter where on the field you get it. And then as you start to progress progress that's when you start looking on the tactics and yes exactly, strength side yeah. yeah so actually i have academy an academy here in nova scotia so that's what we're incorporating tactics now so yeah that's pretty yeah. cool yeah it's pretty pretty similar <laughs> well yeah it was like eye-opening to see like how many tactics uh that like there are in the game because when i like it was a couple months ago now but uh when i started doing it, it was like pretty eye-opening because our coach would just give us this, all these tactics and it would be so interesting because I personally love tactics. Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on the coach, right? So I think different coaches have different ways they want to play and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. you might play under one coach who wants to play a certain way and then you go to a different coach who has you know, a completely different way of playing. So yeah, I think sometimes it comes down to, to the coach and stuff like that. But I think for an academy, I think the, the academy just has one way of playing and that's obviously... That, that's the same for about every age group. So each coach is going to be the same. They're going to try and incorporate, um, you know, the same style of play. So, um, yeah, I think that when you when you get older, then it's then, then it's the focus turns from you know developing into into winning. So let's talk about developing. I read on Wikipedia that you played a lot of futsal as a youth. Um, was yeah. that through that academy or was that through something else? No, that was through something com completely different. Um, okay. I had a I had a coach. Um, back home um, in, in England who was running a, a futsal like academy centre sort of thing. Um, so I used to play with the Villa twice a week and then I used to play with uh, play with my futsal team um, yeah, twice a week as well, um, just the days that we weren't training um, in the academy. Um, and yeah, that was actually really good. Like At the time, I just used it as you know extra training sessions or extra games and stuff, but it actually helped me a lot, I think, like with the ball and stuff, because it's, it's obviously small sided, it's five a side. Um, so you get lots of touches on the ball, like you're always on the ball, you know, there's, there's no offsides or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, I actually really, really enjoy playing playing futsal. Um, and I think that definitely helped, helped my game for sure. Do you, is there a specific part that you feel like it helped in particular, would you say? Um, I would just say... Honestly, just every, everything to do with the ball. I think you get so many touches on the ball um, in futsal. Um, you know, you can go and get the ball in, in different areas. And I think that's what it is as well. You know, you, you learn to play in, in tight areas and use different parts of your feet to control and, and move the ball and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I just I, I think generally just with everything with the ball um, helped me, helped me for sure. Yeah, I, lo I personally love futsal and sometimes like I'll play it with um, my academy because we'll do like little five-a-side like futsal tournaments. Uh, but yeah, it really gets touches on the ball and it gets you doing like all these creative stuff. And I feel like uh, once you get to a bigger field, if you're able to be comfortable on the ball with pressure coming from everywhere, once you have more time on like 11-a-side field, it's really going to help you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Especially staying calm on the ball with like your decision making. Yeah, 
yeah, I think if you can do it in, you know, in tight spaces and stuff like that, then when you, when when the pitch opens up and you've got more time and stuff, you know, the game the game becomes, you know, quite quite a fair bit easier. So, yeah, I definitely I definitely think that helped me. Yeah, it's interesting. We talked to a lot of uh, professional soccer players, and quite a few of them um, have played futsal. I know Ronaldo did. There's yeah. a comparison between you and Ronaldo there <laughs> now. Um, how's that? Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, and so it's interesting that you, that you not only played in the Aston Villa, but you also had this, this kind of, uh, futsal on the side, which at a young age was, was almost as much time. Um, so that's interesting how that, how that kind of developed, because one of the things that Jack noticed about your play on the pitch with Pacific, when we first saw you was, you know, your, you, you, he said you could do all these little moves on the ball. Right. And, um, yeah, and, and I, when you, I first saw you play for Pacific, um, I, I was blown away right, right uh, from the beginning. We'll get to that a little bit later, <laughs> and I'll tell you why, um, why I was so impressed. Yeah, um, and I wanted to ask you a, a bit more about your play style in particular. So is there, um, is there, do you have a favorite formation to play in or like a formation that really suits your style of play the best? Um, honestly, pro- probably not, to be honest. Um, just whatever the manager, you know, just did, whatever he wants to play and stuff. If he plays me as a, as a six or, or as an eight or as a 10 or out wide, I just, yeah, I just play, I play wherever he wants. You know, I don't really, uh, I'm not really too concerned about the actual formation as long as I'm on, I'm on the pitch and I get to get to like, show everyone what I can do then. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing for me. So wherever he wants me to play, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to play. Yeah, is there a specific uh, is there a specific thing that you really enjoy about each position? Or uh, I think I enjoy midfield a, a slightly more than playing on the left, just because I feel like in midfield you can go and get on the ball um, a lot more in you know different areas and stuff. Um, as a six and as an eight, um, you can kind of you know um, go not wherever you want, but you can you know, create angles and you can give your teammates, you know, different options um, to give you the ball. Whereas I think on the left, sometimes um, you're kind of stuck just on the left. So you may only get the ball when it's on your side of the pitch. Um, So yeah, for me, I prefer playing in midfield, but I played a season or two um, on the left in New Zealand. So that's where I've become, you know, relatively comfortable um, playing from out wide as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that playing multiple positions has like, helped your development so you know so when you're in center mid you know what the winger needs or if vice versa yeah exactly i think um if you if you played in the positions and stuff then you can kind of form um, partnerships with you know different players on the pitch so as a six you can form your partnerships with your eights and your, your two center halves and if you're playing on the left you can you know maybe form a partnership with your left back and your your number nine so you know if he moves this if he goes this way then you know that he's going to make a, a counter movement somewhere else so yeah, I think to to play in different positions is is it's obviously a good thing. It gives the manager um, different options and different choices and stuff. And then, yeah, it gives you gives you a better chance to to play. So, when did you develop playing with your with your head up? Like, that's um, something that, that a lot of kids struggle with. I think it was through the through the academy, just through. Through Villa, I think. Um, I don't really remember a specific time where you know they, they they told me to play. I think I just you know played my normal game, and I don't know. It kind of came, I guess, a little bit, you know, naturally as if um, you know I was training with with them twice a week, mm-hmm. and we were getting obviously good coaches coaching us and stuff, and everything was with the ball, and they just tried to you know get everyone to play with their head up and play forward, and you know, um, and basically just enjoy the game and have fun as well. And I think that's. I've carried that with me um, through through my whole career so far, um, just to enjoy it and you know just try and yeah play with my head up and if that means I can play forward and stuff then yeah we will try and do that. Is Villa your team? Yeah, Villa's my team. Yeah, yeah Villa's my team. I guess it'd be hard not to have a, a soft spot for Villa, right? Yeah, I, I still follow them here and there. I don't really watch too many of the games now because because I'm over here and I've been in New Zealand and stuff like that. But okay. yeah, I still follow their results and stuff and, and hope they do well. Good. Yeah, they're yeah they're a, like a fun team to watch in the Premier League. Not like they're not like the top team, but it's cool to see like an underdog like cons- like consistently do well against some of the bigger teams. It's always fun to see uh, like 
because they just signed Danny Ings, which is super cool. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like a I've, top level striker. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've obviously sold Jack, so um, they've used some of that money to, to bring in a few new players. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're getting better. We've obviously signed Danny Ings and we've signed the guy from um, Norwich. And mm-hmm. um, I think we've got a deal in place for the um, a guy from Bayer Leverkusen as well. So I think, yeah, he's building a good squad actually. So hopefully we can we can, you know, push on for maybe maybe a spot in the Europa League for, for the season after. Yeah, that'd be cool to see. That's been not that's been very optimistic, but you have to be. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> um, yeah, like it really helps to be optimistic with everything. And I just when you said that something that my, my coach brought to mind, um, just something that my coach says is as an attacker you always have to be optimistic because like you're always looking to see is the ball going to come to me? Is the ball going to come to me? Ready to sprint. <laughs> exactly. Um, you have to be. You have to be. You have to be ready. Yeah. So let's talk um, about... Um, or do you have a question? You go. Okay. No, you, um, go. you go. So I was curious about uh, Northern Ireland. So you got called up as a youth to the, to the Northern Ireland squad. How did that come about? And how did they get in, in contact with you? Um, because obviously um, you were living in England, right? Yeah, so my I was obviously born in England. Uh, my mum's from Northern Ireland, so she's uh, she's from Belfast. So I'm obviously half English, half Irish. So I'm able to to represent Northern Ireland through like my my mum's side of the family. Um, and it was it I was at Yeovil at the time, um, the the team in League Two. Um, and yeah, they invited me in for like a like a training camp or something. There was no like international fixtures or anything. It was just you know, a training camp to, to get the squad together. Um, and I think it was actually after I made my debut for the first team. So they, they, they probably heard about it and, and stuff like that. So they invited me in um, for a, a week long training camp. So I trained with them. And then um, there was a second training camp that was uh, just before they flew to um, Poland for their um, Euro like qualifiers. Um, so they invited me into that as well. We, we trained for the week and then we played a game against, I think it was Stoke. Stoke City's like under 18s with their 23s um, at the end of the week. So obviously I played in that game, and then after that, yeah, they included me in the squad for the for the Euros, and then yeah, that's pretty much just how it came about. What cool. was that experience like playing like international level? I mean, at such, yeah, such that, a young age too. Yeah, that was that was a, probably one of the the proudest moments I'd say so far in my career um, to represent your country is obviously um, you know a special feeling. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I will always remember that. And then yeah, I've only I've only played for them once, but if we can get a few more few more caps and stuff, you know that 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 would be nice as well. But yeah, that was obviously it, it was really good and um, something that I'm I'm thankful for even even to this day. So you you haven't committed uh, as a senior player to any particular country yet, right? No, not yet. Okay, but um, has has any chance to play for Northern Ireland in in the future? Like, what what do you think about that? I think I'd well. I've probably got a better chance of playing for Northern Ireland than England right now. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, no. If 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 the opportunity came about, then yeah, I'd be um, obviously yeah, I'd be committed to, to playing for them. Um, so yeah, hopefully we we can have a good season and stuff. And then if the opportunity ever does come up, then yeah, I'd, I'd obviously definitely take that one with both hands. Nice. Yeah, hopefully it comes up. I mean, you've certainly been. Um playing really well in the in the Canadian Premier League um yeah so that that would be good to uh that'd be good to see and yeah, you're, getting, sure. yeah. you're getting a bunch of highlight reels and, and stuff <laughs> like you know yeah I wouldn't that, be su- scored that world in, in the first uh <laughs> the first game yeah I wouldn't be surprised if uh Northern Ireland reached out to you like sometime like maybe around the end of the season or sometime because you're performing really well <laughs> And like you've been yeah. a treat to watch. Yeah, obviously we we got we got a long way to go, but I think if we keep if we keep working hard and I keep my feet on the ground and stuff like that, then I don't think there's any reason why why it can't happen. Hopefully. Okay, so um, how yeah, so how about um, Yeovil Town? Um, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, Yeovil. Yeovil, okay. Yeovil. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. Glovers, the Glovers, is that the nickname? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. the nickname. So the Glovers, um, you're like the youngest player they've ever they've ever signed. Um, I, how did that come about? I think at the, so. After I left Villa, um, I signed for Southampton. It was like their development mm-hmm. um, development squad for 
well, it was meant to be like a two year, um, like a two year course program thing. So we would train um, full time, um, and then we would um, still study like alongside um, at, at college as well. Um, and that was meant to be for two years, but it actually got cut short after a year. So the second year, um, Yeovil Town. Um, well, they basically before that they didn't have an academy. The the man the old manager, you know, scrapped the academy because he just wanted to just focus purely on the first team. Um, and then when the new manager came in, he wanted to bring the academy back. So the first year of the academy being, you know, reformed and stuff was the basically fell in line with us needing a club for the second year because Southampton, you know, cut the cut the thing short. So all of our second year scholars then went to play for Yeovil. Um, and then I think it was about six six months into that, um, the the manager gave me my debut in League Two, and then I, I signed my first pro with them. You know, shortly after. Um, and yeah, I think at the time I was the youngest player um, to play for them in in the football league. But I'm not sure if that's been broken now. I think it. I think someone else might have came in and take that one. But well, yeah, I didn't hear time, about it at the time. I was yeah. We didn't, we didn't talk about that. If one. I didn't hear about it, didn't, didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think at the time at the time I was I'm, I'm fairly confident I was the youngest. Yeah. Yeah. So what did they see in you that that where they where they they signed you so young? Because League Two is 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 pretty. Um, you know, pretty pretty cool for someone that, that grew up in England. Um, yeah. And you're 17, you're signed in, in League Two. Um, that must be pretty awesome. Yeah, I think League Two is obviously a um, pretty physical, tough league. So to throw a 17-year-old, you know, kid in to his first game was obviously a credit to the manager and stuff. Um, at the time, I can just remember them having like a lot of injuries to the first team. So I actually think they had about eight or nine guys out injured um, for the first team. And then, I think he called me up to train with the first team for the first time on on the Wednesday. Um, I trained with them Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then um, he started me on the game on the Saturday. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty. It all, it all happened pretty quickly, actually. Um, and then yeah, I think I, I played played the first game um, away. I think we played Crawley, Crawley Town away, um, and and beat them one nil. And then you know, luckily he gave me my my home debut the week after. So yeah, it was good. I was. Obviously, in Britain, I'm thankful to him because if it wasn't for for that manager at the time, then you know, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to to make my debut at such a young age. Mm-hmm. Did you notice like that the the level was higher than you were what what you were used to at like 17, or was it about the same, or what were you expecting? Um, I think that yeah, I think the level was was probably a little bit better than what I thought it would be. I think at 17, you're still obviously a young kid, so you're still only mm-hmm. used to playing like youth team football and you know reserve team football and stuff. But I think first team football in League Two is obviously completely different because you know the the kind of development and you know the, the way they want to play goes out the window. It's just all about obviously trying to trying to win. Um, you don't they don't really care like how they do it. They just, they just want to win. So yeah, it was actually better than what I thought. It was more physical than what I thought. Um, I kind of expected that a little bit because I'd heard about. Um, you know the physicality of the lower leagues in England, but yeah, obviously with it being physical as well, that doesn't mean that they they can't play. I think um, they they do play some some good football in them leagues when they can. Um, but yeah, it was definitely it was definitely a little bit better than than what I expected for sure. Okay. And then and then so so you're there, um, and they end up loaning you out um, a couple of times. Uh, obviously, you know probably to get you more more minutes and stuff. Um, yeah, and so. How did that? How did that transpire? Like, um, so you loaned out a couple times uh, to to um, other leagues, and then in 2017 you get released. Like, do you think they 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 rushed you a little bit? Um. So at the time, the 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 manager that gave me my um, gave me my debut got sacked, and then they brought the the new coach in and stuff like that. Um, he obviously didn't really see a plan for me in the first team at, at that time, so he loaned me out to. Um, a team in I think two leagues below in the conference mm-hmm. uh, conference north no not conference north maybe conference north or the league below the conference north it was a few leagues below league two um, and that was obviously just for me to go and get games and stuff because I was I was training all week um, with Yeovil and then I was either sitting on the bench on the weekend for the first team or you know sometimes not even making the squad um, so yeah that was obviously to get regular games at the end of a week's training um, which was obviously still good because I was. You know, playing against men in a in a competitive league at you know seventeen, eighteen, which is even now I think that actually helped me a lot. Um, then then a few months because it got me used to playing, 
you know, competitive football in, in, a, in a physical league. Um, and then at the end of that season, um, the manager didn't offer me a new contract. Um, and that's when I moved moved back home and then signed for, for that team in non-league for, for a year. So is that is that like semi-pro, like that level? Or yeah, so the... I'm not yes, exactly it's, sure. it's okay. semi-pro, yeah, amateur. So it's semi-pro, so the players still get paid and stuff, but um, it's only part-time, so it's just two or three times a week training. So right. most guys will have... Um, it, it, in that league, most guys will have a job that they do um, full-time during the day. Is it really difficult to plan your football career when, and I know you're not the only player who's gone through this, you know, a manager sees potential, you know, they sign you or whatever, and then three months later or five months later or two weeks later, they're sacked and then a new manager comes in and, you know, they're going a different direction. They're looking for somebody, you know, taller, faster, you know, yeah. different, what, whatever, you know, like how difficult yeah, is that? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think obviously, as young players coming through and stuff, you um, if you know a manager could sign you and then you know they could get sacked, like you said, and a new manager can can come in who might not you know like the way you play or might not um, think you're ready for the first team. Um, and then also, obviously, you know if they if they don't want to play you, they're not going to play you. Um, so yeah, it's obviously you need you need a bit of luck on your side as well at times to to get the right manager who who wants to play the right way. Um, but yeah, that was something that I just had to deal with at the time and, you know, keep training, um, every day until, until my chance came. Unfortunately, he didn't, he didn't, you know, really favor me in, in that way. So, you know, we went our separate ways and yeah, I, I did my thing, um, in, in a, in a lower league, but you know, I'm, I don't hold any, any hard feelings and stuff. I was still, I was still young. I was 17, 18. So it was my first, um, first professional like contract. So even without playing, you know, week in, week out, I was still, you know, training every day, like with, with established professionals. So I was seeing how, how they train and they, they, they conduct themselves and, and stuff like that. So yeah, I still, still learned a lot without actually playing, without actually playing many games. How important is mindset at that time? You know, when, when yes. you're, you're kind of bouncing around, I mean, I'm sure that not all players who you're playing with, you know, have the right mindset, but how do you keep the right mindset? Yeah, I, I think that's a big. I think that's a big thing actually. Um, having the right mindset, um, like the, the mental, the mental side of the game. Um, I think it's probably overlooked a little bit. Like people don't actually realise that it, it, you have to be strong mentally as, as well. Because if you're not playing, um, or if the manager doesn't like you training every week, you know you're you're hours away from your family. It's not like you can go home after training and you know be with your family and stuff like that. Some guys are living on their own, or some guys are living. You know, maybe somewhere that they're that they're not a massive fan of. Um, so yeah, I think you've got to be mentally pretty strong to turn up and train um, every day with you know the same intensity and stuff like that. And obviously, when your chance comes, you have to take it. Um, so yeah, I was fortunate. I had you know good mates in in, in and around the, the team and in the squad who were you know as a similar age to me. So we were all kind of in in the same boat. You know, we weren't really playing for the first team. Um, we were just you know training every day and then um, playing for our playing for our teams on loan on the weekend so I think we all you know we were quite tight knit so I think that was actually a big um, big plus for, for all of us actually because we kept each other grounded and stuff and you know we we pushed each other in training so yeah if we if I didn't have have them guys with me it might have been slightly different but yeah I think for sure the, the mindset and the, the mental side of the game is is a big part of the game yeah like you said it's a huge part of the game off the field but also on the field because like even when you're losing, if your head drops, you're already losing the mental balance. It takes so much work just to get to where you were. So like to have not let your head drop and have the mental resiliency to keep going, have the fighting mentality is super important. And also to like, like you said, show up to train with the same intensity, like keep doing all the little things and just like wait for your chance. Yeah, absolutely. You have to. I think if, you give the the manager any um, reason or excuse not to play you, then he's not going to play you. So I think if you're not in the team, you just have to keep, um, you know, keep doing your thing and keep training um, and pushing yourself each day. And then, yeah, when your chance finally comes, if it, if it does come, then at least you're you're ready to take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because more than half of the game is played in in. Um in like your head because like even if you're the most skilled player in the world this is something that my coach says a lot even if you're the most skilled player in the world but you make 
horrible decisions. You're not going to be a good mm -hmm. soccer player in 11 aside. Yeah, absolutely. And something that I want to ask you is like, as a player, like, how do you get ready for a game? And how do you get into like the mindset to like perform well for a game? Um, I don't really have any like pre-game um, rituals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I do do actually like to do before either the night before the game or the morning of a game, um, depending on like what position I'm playing in and stuff, it's just like maybe like watch a 10, 15 minute, you know, video clip of someone playing in a similar position. Um, so if I'm playing six, I'll watch a, a six or an eight or a 10. Um, but other than that, I don't really have any like um, any superstitions, if, if you want to call it that. I just kind of just try and stay relaxed and then go out and just play my normal game. Yeah. Yeah, um, do you, so like when you watch those players, is it like the same players every time and do you try to like emulate them or? Um, yeah, so if I'm playing playing six, um, I'll probably watch um, a player, maybe like Verratti or someone like that, someone like a, a similar, you know, build or, or body type, not body type, but you know, it's same, mm -hmm. same size as me. Um, and then I'll do the same for an eight or a 10 or, or, or a winger. Um, and then, yeah, I wouldn't say emulate, I'll just say, just try and have a look at, you know, some of the stuff that they do and then the positions they take up and then, yeah, just try and incorporate that, that into my game. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's, that, that's one thing I definitely do do before a game is just watch one short video. Um, but other than that, there's, there's not really too much, um, too much else that I try and, you know, do before a game. Okay. okay. Who do you watch as a six? What's one, a si one player? As a six, uh... Or you Verratti. got that down. Nah, you don't need to, to, it has to, to be Verratti. Yeah, it has to be Verratti, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love Verratti. Um, as an eight, I used to like um, David Silva and Iniesta and mm -hmm. them type of players. Um, and then as a 10, maybe like uh, Coutinho from when he was at Liverpool and stuff like that. So, yeah, they're the main three or four that I like to watch. Okay. Yeah, I actually love Iniesta because I... I think he's such an amazing player and like I love the lacroqueta like his little move I actually do a lot in games I think it's just yeah. such a clever little move because if you execute it right you're gone two quick yeah. taps and like yeah, <laughs> you're past the defense but yeah, yeah I love Iniesta he's so yeah, he's one of my favorite as well yeah cool so yeah how I love did you was kept Xavi and Iniesta like that field <laughs> midfield <laughs> oh yeah you go so how did you develop your, your soccer IQ? Um, did you, did, like, was it through Aston Villa? Did you, did you watch a lot of soccer at a certain age? Um, did you just kind of, once you got to the point of where you're taking it really seriously, did you just kind of spend some of your own time, like you said you were doing, watching these different players and kind of, kind of trying to see how they, how they dealt with different situations? Yeah, I used to watch, when I was younger, I used to watch a lot a lot of football actually um mm -hmm. if, if, any time there's a game on, i would watch it it doesn't matter what team was playing um uh but yeah i think it yeah it probably had a big the academy obviously had a massive part you know you're there for for nine ten years and stuff like that you know you're picking up little things to to make you better each day um from from coaches that have you know coached um some some top players and you know brought players all the way through into the first team so yeah, I would say that was obviously a big, big part of it. Um, certainly developing in, in that environment and stuff. And then I'd actually say futsal helped it as well. Like had that that played its maybe wasn't as big as of a part, but it played its small part in, you know, just playing in tight areas and trying to get out of, um, you know, certain situations. Um, so yeah, I would say them them two things. And then obviously that partnered with you know watching a lot of football and then. You know, when the best teams were playing, I would try and just focus on on one on one player that was playing in a similar position to me. Um, and then if I could take a little bit from their game and, and add it into my game, then yeah, I was I was that, that's what I was trying to do. Okay, I have a, I have a weird question. I have a weird question. Yeah. So let's say you were at Yeovil Town. Um, could you tell which players after a while had played futsal as uh, more as kids? Um, like, like, is that is that something where you could say, oh, okay, there's like a correlation there, or maybe not? I wouldn't. I'm not. Maybe yeah. There's there's one um, skill in futsal where, well, not skill. It's the way they control the ball. So when the ball gets passed into them, 
you'll notice they, they use like the sole of their feet to control the ball. So they'll roll their the, the sole over or roll their studs over it and stuff. And maybe not a Yeovil because there wasn't many like um, foreign players and stuff like that. But when you watch them and, and you know, they, they roll their studs over the ball and stuff, you can maybe tell that, you know, they played a little bit of futsal or, or five aside and stuff like that. But even at Yeovil, if they didn't play um, futsal and five aside, the guys that we had um, on loan, so we had a few guys on loan from Premier League clubs mm-hmm. and, you know, championship clubs and stuff. And you could tell like on the ball, um, that they were, you know, of that quality because they've been in, you know, they've come through Premier League academies and, you know, pretty much every academy is generally the same now. Everything's like dominated with the ball. So even for them guys, if they, if they hadn't played um, futsal and five aside, you could tell that, you know, they've been coached by by good coaches and they've they've basically grown up playing the right way just just by the way they pass and control the ball. Right. Interesting. Okay. Sorry, Jack. You were going to yeah. ask something. <laughs> Oh, I actually forgot my question because that was, uh, though I want to say I love your weird questions. I always find them uh, so interesting. But I wanted to ask like another question about mindset. I remember my question. Uh, so like, is there a quote that you live by or like that you, that resonates with you and why? Um, quote, well, I would just, I wouldn't say it was, I'm not sure if it's a quote, but you um, you just always have to maybe, well, you always have to believe in yourself and stuff. So I think for me at the time at Yeovil where, you know, me and me, I wasn't playing, you know, week in, week out. And, you know, the manager didn't didn't fancy, fancy you know, the way I played and stuff. I think it's easy to, you know, let, let, let yourself get down and let your confidence get down. But I think if you always believe in yourself and you believe in, in your ability and stuff like that, then... Know, you, and and you can prove to them why you should be playing. Um, then yeah, I think that's a that's a big thing because if you don't believe in yourself, then you can't expect you know anyone else to, to believe in you. So I think even when people maybe don't 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 fancy you and stuff, then you just have to you know keep believing that your chance is going to come and keep working hard. And yeah, like I said, when you when your chance does come, you, you you're going to be ready to take it. So yeah, I would say that that one. Um, it's not like a set quote, but just always you know believing in yourself and believing in in your ability. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like believing in yourself, like um, I said before, is so important because, like, the mental resilience. So you just to keep pushing because when you get your chance, it's gonna pay off. But yeah, yes, like. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Then, then you land over in in New Zealand. Um, how did that come about? Because that's um, uh, that's quite a ways. Yeah, that was yeah. It's been <laughs> up until that point, my career was pretty it's pretty standard. But I think after New Zealand, it's it's taken a bit of a unique turn. Um, you know, going from England to New Zealand, but no, it actually came about um, after I left um, Yeovil in League Two. Um, I actually went on trial with a few teams um, in England, so I was trying to get like mm. a um, get like a contract with an under 23s team. Um, so I went on trial to to Barnsley's under 23s, who were in the Championship, I think, at the time, and Burton Albion's under 23s. Um, who were in the, uh, I think they were in League One um, when I went on trial with them. Um, so they, they, they didn't offer, offer me anything at the time, but it was actually the head of um, recruitment um, and the head of academy at Burton um, who kind of pulled me into his office, um, you know, at the end of the trial. And he said, you know, um, we like the way you play. Unfortunately, they, um, this isn't going to work out, but would you be interested in going, in going overseas? Um and I, when he when he said that, I thought, yeah, if he's if he's talking about Europe and stuff, then yeah, I'll go. Um, and then he actually mentioned New Zealand. Um, and then in the back of my head, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't really associate football uh, with New Zealand too much. So I kind of well, he put me in contact with 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 the guy in in New Zealand, and I kind of like brushed it aside for six months. Um, and that's when I signed for that team in in non-league um, back home in England, which was obviously amateur semi-pro. Um, and then it was like six months in. Um, it came to after Christmas, I think 20, 2018, I think it was. Um, and I wasn't really enjoying my football that much in England. I was starting to not fall out of love with football, but you know, I wasn't enjoying it anywhere near as much as I was when I was younger. Um, I, the, the enjoyment kind of got sucked out of it for me. I signed to that team in, in non-league. Um, I think I was, yeah, I was 18 at the time. Um, and obviously, Coming, coming through the Villa Academy and stuff, everything um, that I've learned was obviously to play with the ball and stuff like that. And then when you kind of drop down into non-league, it's just, you know, pretty, well, it's a lot more physical and it's a lot more, you know, long ball and, you know, trying to win second balls and stuff. And for my game at the time, it didn't really like suit me that that well. Um, 
And that was along with the fact that I actually wasn't playing. Uh, I wasn't starting as many games as I thought I would. Um, and then it was after Christmas, I was, like I said, starting to um, not enjoy it as much as much as I used to. And then, yeah, I picked up the phone to the guy in, in New Zealand. Um, then we had like a few chats and stuff like that. And then, yeah, I just thought I would just go for a season and see how it went. And if I never liked it, I could just always just come back home. But right. yeah, I just, I just decided to just go and just see how it was. And then I ended up staying there for maybe two 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 and a half years um but yeah it was it was amazing it was probably one of the the, the best decisions i ever made to be honest uh for sure yeah i really why? enjoyed it why why was it so um, um why was it so good like like was there not a lot of drama around it or i, I think the just the country like in general like how nice the country is and like how how nice the people are and kind of how laid back it is um actually like really helped um and then the football, the, the league over there is actually like a lot, a lot better than what people would maybe think. Um, the, the top leagues actually, you know, it's not obviously it's not professional. It's clusters, it's still clusters like amateur, but we were training, you know, three, four, five times a week. Um, so yeah, I just really enjoyed um, living over there and meeting new people. And then you know, I always enjoyed you know traveling as well. So I got to do a little bit of traveling, um, you know, outside of football. Um, and yeah, I just you know. And basically just got the enjoyment back for, for playing and that was one of the main things for me at that time just to enjoy playing the game again and you scored some goals over there right yeah so I think the first the first season I played for a team in in Auckland um, so mm -hmm. I played left left wing for the whole of that season um, I had I did it it was an okay season I think it was maybe maybe five in in 17 18 so it wasn't it wasn't amazing um, and then the, the second season um, was down in Wellington for team Wellington. Um, and I think that was uh, six six goals and, and eight assists in maybe ten games. So yeah, mm -hmm. that was a that was a pretty good that, that was a good season for them. But yeah, they 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 play a similar way to Pacific and stuff. You know, they like to do everything mm -hmm. with the ball and you know dominate possession. So I played as like a ten um, ten for them behind um, and number nine. So yeah, we had a pretty good pretty good partnership. So I think it was it was an easy like transition um, to come and play for them guys. Yeah, that's good. So, like, it suited your style of play, and it sounds like that team was pretty good. And, like, you said you were playing at Cam at that time, right? Yeah, for Team Wellington, I played as a number 10, yeah. Was that the first time you had, like, played Cam, uh, like, at, like, a high level, or had you already played Cam in the past a bit? Um, I played my first, well, my, my two games for Yeovil um, in League 2, I played as, like, a 10. Like okay. behind a behind a striker, um, mm -hmm. so I had two two midfielders, and then I was just in front. Um, and then the the times I spent on loan with with the the club um, when I was at Yeovil, I also played like in the hole as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's where I grew up playing, um, you know, for Villa and stuff like that. So that's probably my most like natural position. Um, but yeah, it was good to just get like a full season playing there, and you know, mm -hmm. adding you know goals and assists to my game. Um, so yeah, that was that, that was a really enjoyable um, and really enjoyable season actually. Yeah, and it, was it like a big? Did you find that like a big transition once you had come to Pacific and play like a deep lying playmaker almost from being like an attacking minded midfielder to more of like a deep lying playmaker? Yeah, um, I'd never actually really played as a six um, mm -hmm. before, um, but I think obviously Par maybe saw something in training and stuff, and he wanted to to use me there, but. I think it's it's obviously not the same, but if you're comfortable on the ball as a as a ten or an eight, then there's no reason why you can't really play as a six as well. Because most of the time it is you know getting on the ball and you know playing forward and stuff like that, and then maybe you have to defend a little bit more as a six and you know win second balls and stuff like that. But I think the principles generally stay the same. Um, you know when you've got the ball, um, you just yeah you just you just get on the ball and you know try and try and dictate the game and, and make your team play. Yeah, something that I noticed because I play actually, I actually play the same position as you. I play as a left yeah. winger. I play as a cam, and sometimes I will play as a CDM. So I played CDM um, this past weekend, and but yeah, so like like you said, it is kind of like the same, but it is different in terms of like you have to make sure that like no one gets past you and you yeah. are a bit more defensive, a bit more like a destroyer, but also once you get the ball, 
you have to distribute it very accurately. And like sometimes as a cam, since you're farther up, you're the one who's trying to control it. But usually as a six, I find that once you get it, you're trying to like hit it into the cam in the half spaces or in the channels. Yeah, I think as a as a cam or a ten, um, when you're in like the final third, you can maybe take a few more risks and stuff because mm-hmm. you know if you if you lose the ball in in you know around their box, then you've got you know eight nine guys behind you to to win the ball back. But I think as a six, um, obviously if you get caught on the ball as a six, you know the way we want to play, we want to you know push our fullback high and stuff like that. So I think you've got to be more careful on the ball. But I think it, the the like I said, the principles really do stay the same, like just being confident mm-hmm. on the ball and. You know, moving the ball and trying to, you know, play through the lines and, you know, find your uh, more advanced players, you know, in between the in the half spaces. So, yeah, it's obviously not the same, but yeah, I think it's all about just being confident and being being calm um, when you do get the ball. Mm-hmm. So, how did uh, Pacific? How did you get on the radar, of Pacific? How did they scout you? Um, it was actually through. Well, when I was in New Zealand, there was um, three or four guys that I knew. Um, that played in the in the CPL. Um, so there's a guy that played for Valor, um, and he his agent is is based here in Winnipeg. Um, so he kind of put me in contact with him, um, and then we were talking back and forth for for maybe a year or, or a year and a half. And then it wasn't until um, December 2020, um, I was actually about to sign for a team in the, in the top division in Iceland. Um, okay. So I was about to go there in, in. I was about. Well, I actually had a flight booked there for January 2021, but I hadn't signed anything yet. Um, and my agent um, picked up the phone and just kind of said, like, um, you know, Pacific are interested in signing you. And then I, I spoke to Par a couple of times on the phone and stuff. Um, and then yeah, they offered me offered me a contract, and then I signed it uh, late late December last year, but wasn't able to come out until. Um, I think middle of April and stuff, just because of uh, mm-hmm. the, the rules of COVID and stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much how it came about. Just a lot of like waiting around and stuff. And then he, he just picked up the phone just randomly one day and then and then told me. And then it pretty much escalated pretty quickly from there. Yeah. And you s- mentioned how you were about to sign for like a team in the top tier of Iceland, you said? Uh, yeah. 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 So and what made you want to join Pacific FC? And Pa, if you were like, what was something that made you want to come here to Canada when you were so close to already signing with Iceland? Like, what was one of the deciding factors? Um, I think ever since the league got formed in like mm-hmm. the inaugural season, um, mm-hmm. I had I was like um, keeping keeping tabs on it like here and there, and I was following it and stuff like that. And then, yeah, I always thought that it would be if the opportunity came up to play here, then I would I would take it. Um, so I said that, you know, even two years before I signed. Um, and I think just maybe after speaking to Parr and stuff, and then obviously he's played at, at you know, the highest level. Um, and he's obviously played with, with good players. And, yeah, just his the way he wanted to play and the way, you know, he sees me developing and stuff like that. And I think, yeah, that was a big part in me, in me maybe coming here to play for play under a coach like that. Um, so, yeah, as soon as I, I spoke to him and, you know, um, he, he explained... Um, the way he saw me playing and stuff like that, I think it was pretty. It was a pretty easy decision from there. And I guess it's it's pretty obvious to say that you wanted to start your career in the CPL with a bang, because when I first saw you come in, <laughs> um, you know, I was just like watching the game, and this is before you scored your go- goal, before the announcer starts going off about you know who is this Ollie Bassett guy? <laughs> like I'm like, who is this guy, man? He's like. What really impressed me was just your movement off the ball. You seem to just have way more drive to just take those extra couple steps to make sure you were like a real solid option. And it was just, to me, it was like dramatic. Like it was just, wow, that guy is just like, <laughs> like all over the field. Like he really is, is just like playing so well. Like, um, so that was my introduction to, yeah, to yeah, yeah. Ollie Bassett. <laughs> and then you cemented that with some crazy, like, touch, volley, like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, uh, that, was, that was pretty awesome. So I'm assuming that you, you said, okay, I'm here in the Canadian Premier League. Everyone's going to know about Ollie Bassett. I'm going to play this game. And then, no, honestly, I just, I don't know. I just wanted to, I just wanted to go out and just play and just enjoy, like, enjoy it and stuff because... That was my first, I think, 
since I left Yeovil, I obviously hadn't played like full time. You can't class New Zealand right. as professional and stuff. So, you know, that was maybe my first like pro game for for five five years, maybe, um, which is a long time. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to go out and just in, enjoy it and stuff, and you know, not really think about the game too much, and just kind of go out and just play my my normal game. Um, but yeah, obviously, I wanted to make a statement and stuff like that, and um, show everyone what what I could do. And yeah, I'm I'm, I'm thankful that maybe I maybe I did that. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, even you did that as a six too, uh, with that with that goal, <laughs> and then and then you picked up a couple team of the weeks, as well in the CPL yeah. already. Yeah, I think I think two, maybe two so far. But yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we we want hopefully we can we can add to that for other season. Yeah, and actually, even before you had made your uh, CPL debut, I was actually really excited for you because I had read the article about you, and I was like, ooh, he's gonna be a good player because I'd actually seen. You play a couple of times. Like I'd, I'd heard about you. So I was really excited when you came to the CPL. And then even before you scored that goal, I was like, wow, he's a really good player. Like Dai said, he was moving the couple extra, you were moving the couple extra steps. But you also look very calm and composed on the ball, which I really like. Like you had all these tricks to get out of trouble, but you also look very calm um, to keep possession of the ball. And then you go to the top of like, I think it was even outside of the 18 yard box, you take a touch. And then you volley it in <laughs> into the back of the net, and <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. <laughs> no, honestly, I didn't. I didn't even see the goal go in. To be honest, there was like three. There was like three guys. That, like I think you know, one of their players came out to block it, um, and then there was another two guys behind him. So I actually didn't see the ball like go into the back of the net. Uh, it was only until like my teammates like started running and cheering and stuff that I realised it actually went in. Um, nice. But I think you know I got the ball on on the edge of the box and then I just thought if I try and like take an extra touch or anything like that and then I will lose possession then they're going to counter us. So I just thought yeah I'm just going to shoot and then luckily <laughs> very luckily it went in. <laughs> yeah, well it looked like so amazing. <laughs> and then even and even since then you've continued to like be a standout player in the CPL playing with very you were like I like I said, calm, composed, lots of little tricks to get out of trouble and also helping your team keep possession well. Yeah, that's it. I think we the way we want to play as well, like the way the manager wants to play is all about um, you know, keeping possession and, you know, being calm on the ball and stuff. Um so yeah, I think it's important for every player on the pitch, you know, from the goalkeeper to the to the centre halves, the full backs, the midfielders, the strikers. Um, I think obviously we want we want to keep the ball, but we want to obviously do it with a purpose as well. Like uh, obviously, aim is to keep the ball to you know open teams up to then go and score. So yeah, I think it's all about just being being calm and composed, and you know not really trying to um, panic. You know if you get pressed and just yeah try and play out of play out of pressure. Yeah, and it looks like as well as you being very good individual it looks like you have been combining and like the gelling of the entire team has been really good as well and someone that I actually think that you've been gelling really well in particular is Marco Busto so could you talk about gelling with the whole team but also with him yeah I think um the obviously I've yeah I've got a good relationship with all the boys not just on the pitch but obviously off the pitch as well mm-hmm. um you know we'll get along um pretty well like in, in the room um, but yeah, I think not even just the the starting eleven, but you know the guys that you know get rotated in and the subs that come in. I think everyone knows like um, what they've got to do when when they get their chance to play. And I think you know the the way we want to play stays the same for for everyone. So yeah, I've got obviously a good relationship with everyone, and uh, obviously with Marco as well. I think when he um, rolls inside off the right and I'm playing in, in midfield, I'll just try and you know find him in them in them half spaces and then. Yeah, let him just get on the ball and, and go and do do what he does best. Do you think uh, versatility is is uh, really important in the modern game? And do you think it's more important in a league like the CPL that has slightly smaller rosters? Um, yeah, I think I think so. Um, if you can, you know, maybe play a numerous well a number of um, positions, I think I mean it's obviously nef- it's definitely going to be um, a positive, especially for the manager and stuff. Um, because he can kind of, you know, put you in in different positions depending on, you know, for our players being out of form or injuries or suspensions and stuff. Um, so yeah, in general, I think it's um, obviously a good thing. And then, especially when the rosters aren't, um, you can't have as as many players on the roster. I think to have, you know, one or two players that can play in in like a number of different positions, um, you can kind of have, 
you know, cover in them positions without having to bring, you know, extra guys in. You can have, you know, one guy that can maybe cover, you know, two or three positions. So, yeah, I think it's it's definitely a good thing um, if you can kind of, you know, master, not master them positions, but you can be comfortable, you know, um, regardless of where you're going to play. So if you're playing as a six, you're comfortable. If you're playing, you know, out wide, you're just equally as comfortable. So, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely, definitely a, a good thing. Um, and, yeah, it gives the manager, like, you know, like I said, different options. Mm-hmm. And I just want to ask you off your point there. Do you, do you feel like when you when um like the manager says you're gonna play like as a cam or you're gonna play a wide? Do you th- does your mindset coming into the game change? Like obviously you you have to do different things, so that changes. But do you feel like anything else changes when you're like walking out onto the field? Um, I, I don't. Mm. I think walking out and just like getting ready for a game um, stays the same for me anyway. Um, mm-hmm. There's no like, like I said, I don't have any like superstitions and stuff like that that I have to do before, mm-hmm. you know, every game, depending on what position I'm in. Um, I kind of just, you know, try and stay pretty calm and relaxed and laid back and, you know, not think about the game too much until, you know, it's time to time to play. Um, and then, yeah, it's just about what the manager wants from you playing in, in that position, you know, if you, if you, wants you to play out wide but he wants you to like roll inside and play as a 10 then yeah it's just about pretty much doing doing what the what the, what the manager says and then yeah playing playing the game uh within the game mm-hmm. and um it looks like we're getting close to the hour mark so i just had um two more quick questions for you and then we should probably go into the rapid fire unless you had another question daddy um i'm just curious if if uh <laughs> in in New Zealand, did you play with Matt Sheldon against Matt Sheldon? Sh- no, I, I didn't play against him, but I have a lot of friends and former teammates that played against him. Yeah, he okay. Because I, um, I thought he was at the, uh, there at the same time, but maybe. Uh, so the, maybe over there, they actually have they, they have two different leagues over there. So you have like one league that gotcha. runs in the summer and then one league that runs in the winter. Oh, okay. Um, so the summer ah. league is the is the national league that's played like obviously all over New Zealand, but. I think during his time there, he was there um, during the winter. So he actually played like regional. So like during the winter, um, each region has their own league. So say Auckland, Wellington, you know, Christchurch, they all have their own like regional league. Um, and I think the time that he was there, I was actually in Auckland and he was playing down in Wellington. So a few of my old teammates okay. and stuff but I actually played against him. Uh, they've, they've, okay. they've told me that a lot. Okay, gotcha. Okay, just that's curious. cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, do you, I... still, you still have a couple uh, minutes just to go for the rapid fire? So yeah, 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 for sure. That? Okay, yeah, all right. yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so just um, two really quick questions for you. Um, so when you're on the pitch, do you have like a favorite skill mode that you like to use? Um, just I don't know. Pa- just I don't know. Just playing, playing. If I'm playing in midfield, maybe um, wouldn't really not not a skill, but kind of just you know playing one twos around around players and just. You know, keep if I'm in midfield, I like to try and keep it pretty simple sometimes. So mm-hmm. I won't try and do too many um, skills and stuff like that. But in the final third, um, as a as a left wing, I'd like to maybe do a step over here and there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like scissors and step overs are very effective, or even just a shoulder drop, because just like yeah. if you sell it right, you can like blow past. Um, a player and and then my question my second last question for you is um is there um what is the best piece of advice a coach has given you honestly just to in, i'll just say just to enjoy playing football because i think as soon as you stop enjoying something whether it's football or anything you do um then you know there's if you're not enjoying you know what you're doing then it becomes a little bit of a you know, a chore and you're forcing to do something, you know, that you're not actually fully committed to. So, yeah, I would say just to enjoy the game and just, you know, try and, um, you know, play with a smile on your face and stuff. It's very cliche, but it's kind of true. Um, I think, you know, you have to enjoy it because if you're not enjoying something, then, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to play your best. That's for sure. Well, mm-hmm. You seem to be enjoying your time at uh, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm enjoying <laughs> it so far. Yeah, it's been very good. Good, yeah. good. It definitely looks like you're very happy on the pitch. And now let's go into the rap fire. So the rap fire is, is less about talking, just tr- trying to know you better. Um, some people say this is the hardest part of the show, so get ready for the hardest <laughs> part of the show. Um, do you play FIFA? I uh, used to, not anymore. Okay. Uh, 
who um do you like to watch any other teams other than Aston Villa or like any other favorite teams to watch surely just to watch Man, Man City just to okay. watch yeah okay cool um do you have a favorite fruit favorite fruit um apple apple I like apples nice I love apples too uh where is your happy place Happy place. Mm. Mm, anywhere in Australia. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> uh, do you have a nickname? Uh, just Bassett. Okay. Yeah, um, okay. Um, what is one superpower you'd like to have? Mm, I'll say to to be to be invisible. Okay, cool. Yeah. Invisibly is a sup- is yeah, super be, cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> um, do you cook? Um, I try. I'm not very good, but I try. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> do do you have something that you like to cook? Um, like if, if we were coming over to to your place, what would you? What um, would you cook? Well, I wouldn't expect too much, but maybe. <laughs> chicken, chicken, chicken stir fry with rice, maybe stuff like that. Vegetables. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's good. That's I, like, good. <laughs> I like chicken stir fry. Um, what's your favorite movie? Movie? Uh, I'd say Shawshank Redemption. Okay, I haven't that's seen that one, one, but okay. That's a good. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Um, favorite board game. Board game. Um, Monopoly. Okay. Cool. Uh, what is your lucky number? Ten. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, what uh, three words to define you? Um, I'd say energetic on the pitch. So this is going to be more than one, but energetic, um, okay. relaxed, and ginger. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then this is my last rapid fire question for you, Ollie. So you have made it through the hardest part of <laughs> the show. Uh, so what are your goals for the future? My goals for the future, um, I would say to keep keep improving every day in training, um, become the best the best player I can be um, under par. Um, have a have a good season with Pacific and then yeah just keep keep enjoying enjoying my football and 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 yeah just see what happens in the future well yeah I think you can achieve all of those and like I said you're an amazing player and I'm super excited to see you play more in the CPL thank you I really appreciate it yeah you're a super exciting player to watch um and thank you so much for giving us this time and and letting us interview you uh, it was really enjoyable. We we had a great time. No, that's fun. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, very fun. Um, so thank you again, Ollie. And we can't wait to see you on the pitch again for Pacific. No problem. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.